Hello and good morning. It's Sunday the 27th of November 2016, 07.10, no, 07.50 hours, Greenwich Mean Time. The sun's just come up. Here are the exciting decorations in Caerphilly. This is the mountain up here and early. Moving on to Cardiff later for the Gravity Station beer debate. Hashtag PS beer debate. No rain forecast. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's still November and it's still Christmas. And there's still a need for carpet for Mr. Manning. Anyway, we have festive ales. Rosy Nosy <laughs> by Bateman's 4.9% alcohol by volume and an emergency cappuccino because it's chilly out. So, what have we got? Hmm. Bit fruity, mm, medium body, tastes nice. Not gonna set the world on fire, but I like it. B plus. Here's number two Cold Comfort by Caledonian, 4.5% alcohol by volume. Having a half, catching a train before long. Nice bit of carpet, Mr. Manning. Hmm. That's different. I don't know how I would describe it, but it's different. Not unpleasant, but hmm, be pleasant. Okay, moved on from the Malcolm a little at Caerphilly Station, and there's a very chill wind. in that direction. Which put to first? Okay, we're going to have a little peep in the Great West and see what ales they got in there. Who knows? We're working our way over to the gravity station. Despite the fact it's only 20 past 10. So, no. It looks like it's going to be the Prince of Wales. Or maybe the beers I had were either Boss beers or Cold Black Label and as I'm eating Gaza later I could get that. I'll stay here for one, this is where I drive and go from this way. You are accepted. Mm. That tastes powerful. Mm. Mm. Good taste. Mm. Nice mm. one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's still a couple of hours early, so I am nicely positioned. In the gatekeeper. I fancy a burger. Not altogether sure why they've got a window open here, but it's nice and toasty. Actually, that's cold. Bit of carpet for Mr. Manning. Rapper Kings by Boosters, which I think has a lady brewer. 5% alcohol by volume, anyway. 10 to 12. I don't know. I might see if it's open early, otherwise it could be a burger I'm looking at. Ooh, that's hoppy. I'm going to give it a B++ almost. Since I haven't done almost, that's B++. Yeah, oh, B++. Yeah. Hoppy! This is wonderful. And Icelandic pale ale. I've got 19 minutes before they open. Okay, I may be a little bit late. 
And the good news, despite the wind for the flag, it's open. I don't want to say it, but look out. I'm going in. Don't tell the camera. But it's all about the beer, not about method of delivery. Emergency carbon dioxide, hammer, and danger moose. 6% alcohol by volume. There's Gaza. What a top man. I can't wait for him to say it's rubbish. We have a sour, Rattle Minstrel Sour by Chorlton, 5.8% alcohol by Robbie. <laughs> the fire alarm went off due to the um, grilled cheese. We're running a bit behind schedule. It's still kind of wonderful. Anyway, this is like an introduction to sours. It starts off quite non sour and then works its way up in the finish. I don't know. I'm going to give it a B because I like it. I want to start taking that. <laughs> I, I guess to a degree, I mean, the trade by, by its nature is cyclical, it wasn't fashionable now, it won't be in a year, and craft beer has been obviously massive for the last few years, will it continue to be massive? Who, who knows? These things tend to go in rotation, and gin is a flavour of a month, but um, yeah, I, I don't know if that means, you know, stop putting money in beer. It's every bubble burst eventually, and then rum will be the flavour of, of town, and then, then it'll be bourbons or whiskies. I don't know. It's, I say enjoy it while it's around and enjoy it while it's there and see what the different producers are making that, that makes it so special. I, I, I don't know. I'm not the biggest gin drinker in the world. Maybe someone here can educate me more. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see you and see you on Facebook, you're getting smashed on gin. So, um, that's, that's on camera. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's certainly um, a flavour of month, a um, flavour of year almost, but, but it's, it's, is it a long-term thing? I, I don't know. I think I, we've I been here so. before with gin in the 18th century. And everyone's <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah! yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I don't touch the stuff myself, it's horrible. You just have a whole yeah. Nothing. Yeah, but it's, it's, oh, God, everything's bloody craft at the moment though. You know, I mean, it's like this week it's craft cheese with a C rather than a K. Uh, next week it'll be craft bourbon. Next week it'll be craft mezcal. Um, you know, it's about people wanting flavour and everything. So I think beer can coexist with gin. Um, yeah, I, I have tried some craft gin when, from Exmoor of all places, and you know, it's the thing is when they talk about craft. I mean, I hate the bloody word, but you get some gin makers who are just getting in. Uh, be careful what I say. A do What's that? your thoughts on that, that, that? I think you're right, the burger thing's spot on. Mm -hmm. Another one of these brewers who, my big issue with it being, as, as you, I mean, I'm, I'm a brewer myself, I own Hopcraft and Pony Clean, and we brew, I hate to, again, I hate to use the word craft beer, but it's it's hoppy, modern style beer, I think it's what we did, basically did. And the issue we're seeing nowadays is, is more and more daddy's rich boys coming along. Who are basically, oh daddy, daddy, craft beer, give me some money. And daddy goes, here you go, son. We'll set, we'll set a brewery up. Oh, thank you. And they go and set a brewery up. And so people say, oh, why aren't you as popular as, as uh, you know, as uh, Tiny Rebel? Because my dad's not a millionaire. I haven't got money for advertising, for branding, forever. I can't do that. Why aren't you as popular as Beaver Town or as Magic Rock or Thornbridge or Siren? Or... These are the guys. These are the, the self-proclaimed elitist elite, they're the self-proclaimed elite, they're the, the Premier League of Brewers. They've got the money, they call the shots, and they are, they are the ones who are, in my opinion, who are ruining the beer industry for the rest of us. They are coming in, 
again, more and more of them come in with the money, taking over, selling beer, to, they, they, can, they can force their way into bars, they can force their way into wholesalers, they're pushing out. As I said before, people like me who really should run a business because it's more of a hobby than a business, but we make the beer we want to drink and we, yeah, we make a business out of it. The people come in with the money and I know every industry, every aspect of life, this happens. It doesn't make it right. And these people are, in my opinion, ruining craft beer, ruining all beer by distorting the way the industry works and by pushing people out who are making maybe better beer than them, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard to say, it's hard to explain to um, the nuances of how it's working, but it's, the, 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 the basics of it are more and more rich people are coming to brewing, seeing it as a bandwagon, coming in, Massive budgets for everything, like well, cloud water are the, are the, are the latest one. But, well, they're not. It's uh, is it Lost and Ground in Bristol, the new one? But cloud water are the latest one. You've got so much money, it's coming out of their ass. They can afford to anything they want, they can afford to come in and employ anybody they wanted to in the whole industry. They, they hand picked the people they wanted to hand pick. And they think, oh, aren't they fantastic? Oh, yeah, so would I buy a million quid? I'd be great. It's, 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 the way, it's the way they're buying success and it's the expectation of success and all these people, all, they all talk to each other, they don't spread it about, it's all oh, collaboration, all like magic rock and siren. Oh yeah, of course, they're all the big boys, yeah. How about us? No, no, no. Who are you? Can I, can I just bring you, 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 you run pubs, you speak to consumers every day, you buy uh, beers from various different breweries, like, do you feel bullied or pressured into buying from all these nouveau riche um, boys with rich daddies or is this is this too. nonsense guys? It's, I, it's, it's I've got to say okay on the tiny rebel front when I first opened the Lansdowne they were really new and we had a great little partnership going and we helped each other along the way and we weren't the big money at all but they still buddied with us and they knew that I kept their beer well and I was selling their beer you know at an exceptional standard that's where that worked but things like the Beaver Town, it's all consumer led. The, the Beaver Town and all of those guys, they are producing beers that people want to drink. And yes, they've got the money behind them, so the cans, the design work is fabulous, you know, all of that kind of thing, which is, again, a real big selling point to a lot of people. But the product is good with it. Well, it's going to be. It should, yeah. it should be good. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's exactly. Good. But it is, so you can't really, you can't take that away from the consumer and say, actually, yeah. you can't buy this because. You know, no. don't like the company because of X, Y, or Z, or whatever. It's a good product, and, people, and consumers are. Oh, I'd product. never argue it's not a good product. My my argument is they are taking not taking away. They are muscling in on the market that, with some, in my opinion, some of the beers aren't anywhere near as good as they say they are. But it's all the hype. It's the, it's the hype. They they generate hype. Like you look at the Cloud Waters IPA range, double IPA. It's all hype. You try the beers, I mean, you can try yourself, but I mean, it's a lot. They can afford to give beer bloggers beer, they can afford to generate hype. I can't afford to do that. And it's, 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 it's not so great. I think it's not so great. It's not jealousy. It's, it's not, honestly. But if you're, it's if, just like at the same time, if you're really hot on your social media, which is the. Uh, I'm not uh, saying you're not, please don't take any of this I'm personally, not, I'm Gavin. Crap, I'm crap but, um, if you're really hot on your social media, which is where a lot of the new generations are taking their inspiration from and following and, and looking at new products and things. I mean, Hang Fire Smokehouse, okay, they, they're not big money no, at no, all. They had no. nothing to start with. They no. brought their smoker back from Texas and they started with zero. Yeah. Everything that they've done has been through social media. And look at the following they've got now. Thousands of people follow oh, yeah. them on Twitter. The restaurant has been open nine months and is, is jammed every every night they're open. This happens, so, yeah, exactly. It can happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and bizarrely, uh, one of the things that I did, and I haven't managed to do it for a while, <clears throat> uh, just a, a social media marketing campaign. For the um, <laughs> Now, yeah. I'll tell you what, at <laughs> some point in your life you have to make a Marmite beer <laughs> um, that was That was inspired by someone else who'd done it. We went to the States. Um, was it Um uh, No, it was actually a beer that had come out of the cause. 
Oh, right. <laughs> Set up that they had in the in the baseball stadium there. Um, and uh, our marketing director tasted the beer there and loved it. And then came back, oh, you're going to brew that, aren't you? No, 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 don't be stupid. <laughs> and then he, did, he decided that we were going to put it at the Great British Beer Festival. And he said, you've got six weeks to brew it. <laughs> so how many bacon do you use? Because you don't need the fat, do you? You, you do need the fat, because all the fat, all the taste of bacon comes from the, from, from the fat. The, 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 the meat doesn't taste of anything. No, but the fat will bother up there. That's why it was hard work, and that's why I'm never, ever making that again. <laughs> but it's still remembered, and some point in time, you've just got to throw something in there that actually gets the, you know, gets that going. Whether it's the right thing to do or not, I don't, I don't know. It's worth, you know, interested about people say, oh, we shouldn't put fruit in beer, but the Belgians have been doing no, it for years. No, I, I, so, I, said yeah. the, I said the Seine you Valley, that was fine. Belgian beers. Yeah, I know, so, I said yeah. the Seine Valley, which is where they make them all, so yeah. that's fine. So, so why does that preclude anyone else doing it? What I wouldn't like to do is beer to go down what seems to have happened with the cider route, where we are almost mm. in an alcohol. Uh, in an alcohol made problem, you know, beer, is natural, should be natural, you know, people say there are, oh that's not real beer, all beer that I know out there is real beer, it's made from the right ingredients. Now, if we were to deviate from that, then I think we're in the back. Real, class. steady, steady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, pick me up on a definition of what's real and what's this, okay? I'm, Okay, genuinely, it is made from ingredients. It is not made from water plus alcohol. Plus water. Yeah. So you know, if we move away and go that far, then yeah, then then we've won. You know, whatever it is, whether it's your expanded hobby, your passion, you're still at the end of the day having to file tax returns. You're still wanting to sell beer. You're still needing to work within a budget. You're still a business, but it's a business which you love. I mean, you know. I could have made lots of money by just working as a sub-editor on a top magazine, but in the 90s I decided that beer was interesting me, and you know, it took me a long time before I was earning, you know, I'm not, I mean, we have to do all sorts of silly things to earn money. <laughs> so, uh, as a, as a, sorry. Sorry, uh, 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 different size and I mean, brains I know engage with, you know, they have a traditional marketing channel, they have a, 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 a semi-active, I would say, social media presence, yeah, not, not the most active, mm. not the least active. Uh, I know you've engaged with bloggers. I myself have sat and sampled hundreds of pints of different variations of Red James about a year and a half ago, while some man from some <laughs> consultancy shouted at me about it. It's on the back of my tongue. He was, um, back on. He was interesting. <laughs> he was very interesting, yes. Um, you know, how do you, how do you see this, this, this playing? You know, you have a relationship with a number of different routes to market and marketing, you know. What works best, what, what doesn't? I think it, it's really interesting how social media has evolved. Um, I think you know you, you are judged on social media very, very quickly. So it doesn't matter which part of the industry you're in, whether you are sort of in the background as brewing beer or whether you are, are you know, like these two guys really pubs. You know, each of our pubs now has a social media um, page. Um, Facebook and, and Twitter, so you are judged immediately. So is most other businesses straight away. You know, so the price of getting something wrong is a very public price and a very immediate price. And we all see the gaps. I mean, it was one the other day. I can't remember what it was, but you just think, no, yeah. what were you thinking? There was a guy who got into a pub or something like that, and they refused to give his child some some mashed potato. Yes. And, I know. And, and why, and why and, would you? And written in on social media yeah. and then they responded by basically saying, oh, are yeah. you a beggar? I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> really why would you do that? Now, my actually, social media yeah. skills aren't great. That's why I don't do a lot of it either. But you can win better ones. Don't, don't have <laughs> it. No, I didn't. Yeah. I can't believe that. <laughs> um, it's probably when you were pushing me around town in when I was in the wheelchair. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but you know, it's, it's a very public face and it doesn't matter whether you're a big business or a small business, we've all seen big business get horribly, horribly mm. 